If you're looking for ideas for Thanksgiving sides, then you've come to the right place because we've whipped up five different side dishes that are sure to delight. Starting with this homemade stuffing recipe, which is going to require 12 cups of bread. We used half a loaf of white and half a loaf of wheat. You also need some celery, an onion, sage, some parsley, butter, and eggs. For the seasonings, you'll need some salt and pepper, marjoram, some poultry seasoning, and some chicken broth. You'll also need 12 cups of stale bread. Back in the day, we just let it sit out overnight. But if you're short on time, you can just bake them in the oven at 250 degrees for 30 minutes. Turn them every five minutes or so so they don't brown. While that's in the oven, roughly dice up some celery, one of the crucial ingredients of a good stuffing. Chop up two cups of this stuff, including the leaves, and place into a container. Next, chop up one cup of onion and add it to the same container as the celery. Put a skillet on medium heat and melt the butter. Add in the onion and celery mixture and let this simmer on low heat for about 20 minutes until the celery is soft. While that's going, get your sage leaves and chop up three heaping tablespoons. Next, chop up one third cup of parsley. By this point, your bread pieces should be ready, so take those out, then get ready to finish the stuffing mixture by adding in one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of poultry seasoning, and half teaspoon of marjoram. Add the chopped sage and parsley to the pan and mix well. To finish this mixture off, we're gonna add in two eggs to a bowl, followed by one cup of chicken broth. Get a large bowl and add in all the bread cubes, then the stuffing mixture, and combine it until it's mixed. Pour all of the egg and broth mixture into the stuffing, mix together, then pour into a 9x9 baking pan. Top it off with a few chopped up pieces of butter, cover with foil, and bake at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Remove the foil, then bake for another 15 minutes without the foil. Once done, move to a rack and let cool before serving. This paleo-friendly cranberry sauce requires cranberry, some orange juice, and maple syrup. For the spices, you'll need some cinnamon and some nutmeg, along with some allspice, orange peel, and ginger. To start, add three cups of the cranberries to a pan over medium heat, along with one cup of orange juice and three quarter cup of maple syrup. Mix well and bring to a boil, then reduce the heat and let simmer for 10 minutes. Add in one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, one quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a pinch of ginger, allspice, and orange zest. Move off the heat and let cool for 15 minutes before serving. This corn casserole recipe is 30 years old and requires just four simple ingredients. One can of creamed corn, one can of kernel corn, some sour cream, a box of chippy corn muffin mix, and some butter. To start, grab a large bowl, combine one cup of sour cream, along with one stick of softened butter and both cans of corn. Now add in the Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix and stir until well combined, breaking up any big pieces of butter. Spread into a 9x13 baking dish and bake at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Man, I'm getting hungry. Coleslaw isn't a typical Thanksgiving side, but this one you might want to consider. You'll need some parsley, cabbage, a red onion, cranberries, and some almond slices. You'll also need some Dijon mustard, apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, some oil, and some salt and pepper. Chop up about half the cabbage to small pieces and set to a large bowl. In another small bowl, add one third cup of coconut oil, then add one quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of maple syrup, and four teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Mix this together, add in a pinch of salt and pepper, and set it aside. Next, chop up just enough of the red onion to fill the bowl. You can add more if you want. Add this to the oil mixture to let it meld for 10 minutes. Now, chop up three quarter cup of parsley and add it to the bowl of cabbage. Add three quarter cup of sliced almonds, followed by three quarter cup of cranberries to the same bowl of cabbage. Add a smidge of salt and pepper and toss well. Next, add in the oil mixture and continue tossing until it's well combined.
Lastly, we have a purple sweet potato salad recipe that didn't go exactly as planned, but maybe you can spot why. For this one, you'll need three pounds of purple sweet potatoes, some eggs, and pecans. For seasonings, you'll need some salt, nutmeg, and cinnamon, cream and tartar, vanilla extract, maple syrup, and some butter. Start by peeling all the potatoes, which for some reason are a lot harder to peel than not purple potatoes. Once that's done, chop them into small pieces so they can cook faster. Drop them into a pot of boiling water and cook for 20 minutes. Drain the water, then return the pot to the stove. Add in one quarter cup of butter, one teaspoon of cinnamon, half teaspoon of vanilla extract, one quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a dash of salt. Next, add one third cup of maple syrup, then mash the potatoes and mix well. Transfer this to a baking dish, sprinkle with some pecans, and bake in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes until the pecans are browned. And here's where the recipe went south. Add the whites of five eggs, but save the yolks because we can use these to make eggnog. Next, the recipe said to add the egg whites to a bowl and set it above a pot of boiling water, not touching the water, until the mixture reaches 150 to 160 degrees. Only, I guess ours got too hot because it immediately started to cook the egg, so we skipped the topping completely. And since you stuck around for the whole video, we have a bonus. These cream cheese stuffed black olives we've been making for years and are always a hit. Just stuff some cream cheese into some black pitted olives and serve. So let's recap what we made here. The stuffing, I think it turned out pretty well. We're box stuffing kind of people. That's just what I grew up on. And I think this really made us change course. It's easy to make and it's actually pretty darn good. The cranberry sauce was very tart, but adding in one tablespoon of coconut sugar really seemed to balance out the tartness. It really is a perfect blend of tart and sweet together. The corn casserole, I'm so glad that Shauna made this for us years ago. It might look homely, but for only having four ingredients, it's absolutely amazing. So stick around for the taste test. The Thanksgiving slaw, I didn't really have high hopes for, but was honestly pleasantly surprised. We initially thought there was no way we'd eat all this, but really that's not gonna be a problem. And finally, the purple sweet potato casserole. It was, well, not a winner. The meringue topping didn't come out the way we'd recipe to said it would, and the taste is so-so. In the end, I think we did pretty well with four to five coming out really good. So I hope you'll find some inspiration from this, but don't take my word for it. Watch the taste test and find out what we really thought. Five yummy Thanksgiving sides. Mm -hmm. Some of these we've made before. Yeah. Yeah, everything else was was new. One did not go as planned. No, I did not. Mm -hmm. That's really good for there only being like four ingredients. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can never go wrong with that one. Right, mix that one together, pop it in the oven. Mm -hmm. It's done. It's probably one of the easiest ones to make. Yeah. And it's really good too. Everybody will love it. Mm -hmm. The cranberry sauce is really good. It was very tart, but we added more coconut sugar. And I think it leveled out the tartness of it. It really did. And that one is paleo friendly, if that's something that you're being aware of. But yeah, I think mm -hmm. that one turned out really well mm -hmm. with the extra sugar. Into the stuffing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can still keep making the box stove top stuffing, but mm -hmm. I think this is easy enough. Yeah, it really wasn't. And that it's bad. really good. Yeah. To be a good substitute for that. Mm -hmm. I've been a box stove top stuffing guy for as long as I can remember because that's what we grew up on. But I think you could probably start making this and it'd be a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, that was part of this too. Like, you know, is homemade worth it? The the extra time and effort, is it really worth it? And I mean, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. I would make that again. Yeah. Slaw. Yeah. Coleslaw is not a typical Thanksgiving side item, but I think the cranberries mm -hmm. uh, made it. And it has the apple cider vinegar, and there was some Dijon mustard in here too, so it has a little bit of tang to it, which I think is nice. It's not like yeah. a creamy, heavy uh, coleslaw. Right, yeah, it's semi-sweet, mm -hmm. so it's pretty good. That one turned out really good too. Yeah, I think so. The purple sweet taters, I'm curious. I think those. the potatoes are good. I feel like the potatoes are gonna be good. I'm just disappointed that the topping didn't turn out. Hmm. That's an interesting flavor. Definitely could have added more milk. They feel a little bit dry. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. This one's questionable. Yeah, I wouldn't do that one again. Mm -hmm. So the other four, four to five, 
those came out good. Yeah. So definitely use those recipes if you're looking for something to make for Thanksgiving, something a little different. Or if you want something pretty, then try the purple sweet potatoes and maybe they'll come out better for you. Yeah. Well, this was our last recipe of the day and I think my brain was getting a little tired. So mm -hmm. I could have messed something up somewhere. And then the olive things, these are always... Yeah. You can't go wrong with those. No, just a nice little snack mm -hmm. while you're doing all the other things. Scrubs up. Yeah, overall, I think it went all right. Welcome to our laboratory. <laughs> I can tell. Why is it purple? Because purple sweet potatoes are a thing. You have a specific name for them? Purple sweet potatoes. Purple sweet potatoes. <laughs> that tastes like a conglomeration of every Thanksgiving item mm -hmm. ever. That's a thumbs down on the purple potatoes. Parker, what That's do you like think? a... If you needed a nutrient block of Thanksgiving <laughs> and it was supposed to be Thanksgiving flavored and you brought it onto a spaceship, I would bring a purple sweet potato. Cranberry sauce? It's sweeter than store-bought. It's really good. Bling! Oh, casserole? Tastes like the cranberry sauce that was on the side of the corn casserole by accident. Bling! Now it tastes like corn casserole. <clears throat> Instead of the store-bought stuff, you're gonna have the cranberry sauce. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Cranberry sauce? Yeah. Okay. Cranberry sauce. Every Thanksgiving. <laughs> Cut the pieces a little smaller, make them a little easier to get off the cork. Oh yeah. Yeah. Every Thanksgiving, I wake up and say, gee golly, I can't wait to eat leaves today. That tastes like nothing. What's your favorite part? Cornbread. Cranberry sauce? Yeah, that. Mm. 3.2 out of 5. Not bad.